Hey there, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's talk is going to be on sugar, the bitter truth. We're going to talk about sugar, what is it, how it affects your health, how it affects your hormones, and where does all that extra sugar go that you eat anyway? So first, what is sugar? Well, we have three main types of sugar. We have glucose, we have sucrose, and then we have the ever most common in today's junk food era, high fructose corn syrup. All right, so let's break these down. Before we do that, let's go over a couple of stats here. The reason why sugar is so important today is because we're consuming it at record highs. One, it's cheap, it's very addicting, and it gets people fat. And let's face it, fat addicted people buy more crap, so they're marketed to more. So if we can get people eating less of it, getting less addicted, they'll be healthier, and they'll be have, have more money essentially to put towards food that is uh, life affirming, not, not life or disease causing, if you will. So about 100 years ago, 100 years ago we ate, we consumed, about four pounds of sugar per year. Now today, today, so let's just put 2010 to keep it nice and round. We're consuming, the average person's consuming about 145 pounds. Now that is absolutely astounding because you got people like me that are probably only consuming just a few pounds. That means someone else is out there compensating and eating about 320 pounds. That is scary. It's like a pound of sugar a day, insane. But if you get one of those big, big gulps or slurpees, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense how that could happen. So again, we have a ton of sugar being consumed on a daily basis. So let's talk about what is being consumed. We have glucose. Now glucose may be in like a sports drink. If you may see glucose there or glucose, the little gel packs that a lot of marathon runners may do. You have glucose from starch. A lot of starch has glucose. We have sucrose. Sucrose is table sugar. I'm gonna put TS for table sugar. Sucrose essentially gets broken down in the body to 50-50 glucose, and fructose. So we have 50% glucose, 50% glucose. Just so you get an idea of what's in your sugar. And then we have high fructose corn syrup, which is almost the same thing. The only difference is with high fructose is the glucose is about 45%. Glucose is 45%. And the fructose, the fructose part, you're going to see is 55. So a slight bit higher, more in fructose. The big thing is fructose tends to have more deleterious effects. And high fructose corn syrup is super cheap, super addicting, and creates lots of damage. And we're going to talk about that. So again, high fructose corn syrup is cheaper. And we're going to talk about how fructose affects the body or how it gets metabolized. So number two, where does sugar go? So first things first, we have glucose. Glucose, about 80% of it goes to the muscle. 80% goes to the muscle. Now let's talk about reservoir here. So our muscle can hold about, let's just say 350 grams of glucose or carbohydrate. And that glucose, when it goes to the muscle, becomes glycogen, right? Gen, when you add that to a word, it just means storage. So we have 350 grams of storage in the muscle. Now when we go and we look at sucrose or the fructose action side of it, fructose actually gets stored primarily in the liver. So when we look at how that gets metabolized here, fructose is going right into the liver. And 80% as well, very similar. And you can see the liver only has about, about 65 or so grams of storage of carbohydrate. So you can see about one sixth the amount that the liver has, I'm sorry, the liver has about one sixth of the amount that the muscle has. So what that means is less reservoir, if we're eating more fructose, guess what happens? We start getting insulin resistance. So I'm gonna write insulin resistance down here. This is really important. And we're gonna talk about how that affects the body. So insulin resistance is a key thing that we are seeing all kinds of problems with because insulin excess amount of it's inflammatory, it creates cardiovascular issues, and can even stimulate cancer growth as well because insulin is a growth stimulating or a storage hormone. So we have systemic insulin resistance when fructose goes up. Not to mention when that liver is full 
and the muscles full, guess where that sugar then goes? That sugar then eventually goes to the blood. So then we have increased sugar in the blood. Increased sugar in the blood. Because we only have three major tissues that can go in, the muscle, the liver, or the blood. And then eventually here, if it gets too high, we'll eventually have something like diabetes. But what's happening here is we're developing systemic insulin resistance when that liver becomes saturated and when the muscle becomes saturated. Now it's always better to be consuming more glucose than fructose just because of the fact that your muscles can metabolize glucose better. One, if you exercise and you have bigger muscles, you may have a bigger reservoir there. And again, it's hard to tap into that liver glycogen off the bat. Typically your body will go into the muscle glycogen first because you're being active and you're moving and then the liver glycogen second. So getting on a lower carbohydrate diet and some exercise will help you tap into these reserves and bring you back down to neutral. But again, you can see here, muscle gets tapped out, liver gets tapped out, it all goes to the blood, we see diabetes. So what does excess sugar do? We talked about the insulin resistance. Also, it down-regulates, it down-regulates this enzyme called endothelial synthase. So I'm just going to call it ES for short. What endothelial synthase does is it increases nitric oxide or NO2. So with, when we have low endothelial synthase, we also have low NO2. And what NO2 does, it's a vasodilator, right? So we have decrease open blood vessels. So guess what this does to our blood vessels over here. You can see here, here's our blood vessel here, nice and wide, and it actually takes it and narrows it down. So if here's our blood vessel like this, it's actually taking it and narrowing it in. It's bringing it in, it's bringing it in, it's bringing it in. And then you can see we have a smaller blood vessel in the middle there. And what that does is it increases blood pressure and it makes the heart have to pump harder to get that blood through into systemic circulation. So we're also going to see higher blood pressure as well, right? We're going to see an increase, an increase in blood pressure. And one of the other ways it does that, we have this compounding problem that keeps on compounding and getting worse and worse. We have insulin resistance, which downregulates endothelial synthase, which then creates decreased NO2, increased blood pressure. We also see an increase in uric acid. And yes, uric acid is a protein compound metabolite, but uric acid is also shown to be increased with from fructose. So higher amount of fructose will also drive uric acid. Uric acid will also increase blood pressure as well. People think uric acid is typically the um, compound found in gout from too much protein or purine intake or rich foods, but fructose is probably more of where we're seeing this uric acid coming from. How? We know that? Well, if we look at consumption over here of sugar, we're eating about 100 times more sugar over the last 100 years. So that's potentially increasing uric acid, which is increasing blood pressure, causing the heart to have to work harder. We have more inflammation via the insulin resistance. And again, one thing that happens when we have increased fructose, we increase these enzymes in our liver known as JNK enzymes or junk enzymes. And junk enzymes are inflammatory. Those are part of the process. For instance, um, when the liver becomes um, inflamed, like you see in alcohol abuse, right? You see that cirrhosis of the liver in alcohol abuse. We also see something known as non-alcohol steatic hepatitis, where that liver becomes inflamed, and part of that process is via these junk enzymes. These junk enzymes are increased because of uric acid and because of higher fructose, and they're causing damage to the liver. So we're creating more inflammation at the liver level. And the liver is important for blood sugar regulation and toxins, so we see a, a whole systemic mess starting to happen as each domino knocks down the speed of how the person's um, health goes. It goes downhill fast. So again, blood sugar is super important. Blood sugar has a huge effect on your adrenal glands and your thyroid, which create thyroid dysfunction, adrenal dysfunction, energy issues, mood issues, memory issues, and a whole host of issues where the conventional medical paradigm doesn't really do a good job fixing because it falls into that chronic disease paradigm. And again, blood sugar issues and hormonal issues are bankrupting our society because we can't just put a band-aid on it with drugs. We have to actually make the right fixes at the diet and lifestyle level. 
So again, this is Dr. Justin signing off. Check below my video for my free video series and ways to get in touch with me. Also, more videos coming your way, so subscribe to get access. Thanks. Have a great day.